has the tribulation begun? Well, the short answer is no. Why? Because the Bible is very clear about a specific set of events that will mark the beginning of the tribulation. Not only when it's going to happen, but also where and to whom. And therefore, I believe that once you take these things out of context, you lose the ability to discern that. And this is exactly what happened to the church of Thessalonica in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the first few verses. You can clearly see that they were absolutely convinced that the rapture took place and the tribulation has begun and they were panicky. And Paul had to write them a letter and calm them down. And he says, haven't I told you that when I was with you? And then he started giving them the set of events, what has to happen. We must not fall into sensationalism. And I think this is the biggest problem of people around the world today. And the biggest problem of the church today is that we are so much into sensationalism that it's coming on the expense of biblical interpretation of the scriptures. And the only way to interpret the Bible in the right way is not to wander away from the Bible. If you read carefully, you know that the tribulation is a set of seven years of God's judgment. Set of seven years that was already promised to Israel in the book of Daniel chapter 9. This is a set of events that is related to the nation of Israel, related to the world in relations to Israel. It begins in Jerusalem. It begins with someone who wants to be the Messiah and reign from Jerusalem. You cannot just, you know, take things out of context just because things are bad in the world. Just because there are, you know, wars and there are pandemics and there are earthquakes. These things are mentioned in the Bible as the sign of the fact that we are at the end time. But Jesus himself, when he gave those signs, he said, but the end is not yet. The minute you take Israel out of the equation, you miss the whole point of the tribulation. The tribulation is not just a set of events that brings about judgment, but it's also a set of events that meant to bring Israel to their salvation. I will go again to my place until they acknowledge their offense and in their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. It's the suffering of Israel that will bring about the repentance of Israel, that will bring about the salvation of Israel. But that set of event is related to Israel. It's related to a certain person who is going to pretend to be their Messiah. It's related to Jerusalem. It's related to the temple. You cannot detach those things from it. Even Paul himself, when he described in the book of 2 Thessalonians, the events of the tribulation. He says there has to be the Antichrist and he has to declare himself as God in the temple of God. You cannot take those words as if they mean nothing. This is exactly, by the way, the same thing Daniel wrote hundreds of years earlier in the ninth chapter. So both Jeremiah and Isaiah and Daniel, as well as Zechariah, and that's the Old Testament, and I'm talking about the New Testament. You read about it also in the book of Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians. You read the importance of Israel in this whole equation. Why sensationalism is so dangerous? It's very easy. Sensationalism is the attempt to hype things on the expense of the truth. You want to make something known, but you don't care if it's true or not. You don't care if it's accurate or not. You don't care if it's scriptural, biblical. And therefore, sensationalism is a big enemy. I'm basically describing postmodernism, but I am describing also a reality where social media is determining the content for the sake of number of views 
and the sake of the fame that comes along with it. On the expense of the truth, I'll give you an example. Not long ago, big, big bombastic headlines, the red heifers landed in Israel. These are not red heifers. They're red calves. They're not determined as heifers. And for the most part, all those that arrived so far were disqualified within the first year of their life. So on the day they arrive, big sensationalism, that's it, end times, this is the big sign, the temple is about to be built. They try to attach it to the temple, they try to attach it to the Jewish people, but they do it in the wrong way. Because the red heifer has nothing to do with the beginning of tribulation. First of all, there has to be the man who will allow the Jews to build a temple. If he's not there, and there is no temple, why would a red heifer be so necessary to me right now? The idea that you take one component and take it from being number three, put it to be number one, and make such a big hype out of it, is sensationalism. It's confusion. You see, sensationalism is using you and then throwing you away. It will never really give you the truth. Well. I think that the way to distinguish between the sensationalism and the truth in this case is timing. Timing is everything. If there is one event in the history that is described in the Bible in accuracy of days, weeks, months, and years, is the tribulation. We know exactly when to start counting. And yet people choose to ignore this precious information and confuse one another with, you know, things that we see today as if they are part of it. Timing is everything.